Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video for this undefined scale, caricaturized M26 Pershing. Now the model that we have here is built for my own personal collection and it's not for sale and or purchase. However, like I often mention in these build videos, I frequently take on commission builds from projects ranging between 135th scale all the way up to 1 6th scale. As for availability and pricing information, that information would be best by contacting me through the email address listed below, which is info at eastcoastarmory.com. Now the model that we have here is built mostly out of the box. However, I went ahead and made a couple of modifications and tweaks to the build, and we'll be going over these tweaks as well as reviewing the base starter kit itself in this video. So stay tuned because there's a lot of cool, interesting content on the way. Before we go any further with the video, let's go ahead and take a quick walk around this model. And this model here is the American M26 Persian, or at least that's what it should be. Realistically, this is a caricaturized model of the M26 from the video game World War Tunes. Which, if you are a frequent viewer of the channel, you will notice that this is a April Fool's Day tradition on the EastCoastArmory.com channel, where during this time I go ahead and release videos of these type of builds. Now for anyone who's stumbling into one of these weird characterized models for the first time, World War Tunes is an online video game where it's set in a World War II time period, but the art style is consisted of these weird, funky type characterized versions of real military vehicles. The game has been around for a number of years now, and since the game came out, they released plastic models of the characterized vehicles in that game. This M26 Persian here is one of them. Apparently the game is a class-based system and the M26 in part length of the video game would be considered a heavy tank. Which in real life that was a thing when the M26 Persian did first come out it was considered to be a heavy tank but was then later reclassified to be a medium tank towards the end of the war and during the post-war years. Now one thing that I really liked about the art style of the game is that just by a quick glance at the vehicle, you know exactly what type of tank it is, i.e. if it's a Sherman, Tiger, King Tiger, or in this case again, the M26 Pershing. This is true for all of the vehicles that come out from this lineup, and it seems like every year there are more new kits to choose from. Before we go any further with the video, let's go ahead and take a step back to when this model was first started in order to get a good idea on what the base starter kit supplies you with. And here's the model at the start of the build. For the base starter kit, I'll be utilizing this M26 caricaturized Pershing from Meng. Of course, like all the other caricaturized kits that Meng makes, it's tied into the World War Tunes video game. This model here is a relatively recent release, and the World War Tunes line has actually been growing in recent years, more than likely due to the popularity of not just the video game, but of the kits themselves. The kit itself I acquired off of Amazon.com, it's a recent addition to the stash, and the model is a little bit more pricier compared to the other earlier renditions of the World War Tunes kits. However, regardless, the model should make for a nice enjoyable build regardless. Starting with the model's box and graphic design, the box itself is the exact same size of box as the other vehicles from the World War Tunes line. The finish is this smooth matte type velvety finish and if you ever seen any of the other Meng kits they seem to have the same type of printing done on them. Now the graphic design is the characterized M26 Pershing right here in the forefront and on the sides we have these two diagonal cut lines. These do two purposes. First they're aesthetically pleasing but the second thing is they also act as a bit of marketing. If you have a retail store type setup and you have a shelf with these kits on display. You, if you have other vehicles from the World War Tunes line, you can see by connecting the two boxes together, you have this continuous band, and one can clearly see that two or three of these boxes stacked up, you do have a nice little shelf display, which in a retail setting is pretty appealing to customers. The rest of the graphic design is typical for again the World War II format, we have this funky type font being used here, which again for the subject matter is perfectly, perfectly fine. On the side here we have the Rook Van, I guess is the game developer that makes the game. Here we have a color sample of what the model looks like once fully assembled. 
And we have a little advertisement here for the pigments, which are made by AK, that Meng seemed to have licensed out. On the back here, some more graphic designs from the video game, and I believe these are actual in-game renderings of the vehicle. Cracking open the box. We'll reveal the contents. And in, just like with the other World War II kits, all of the kit components are sealed in one bag that we have here. Now, just like with the other World War II kits, the M26 Pershing is no different with the medium that they are made in. These kits here are entirely comprised of injection molded plastic parts. They are molded in this little green plastic, which would make sense being a allied vehicle, I guess, because the German vehicles were molded in a tan. Now, these models are all comprised of injection molded plastic, like I said, with the only parts being rubber are the track bands that we have here and here. Opening up the vacuum sealed bag, dig into the kit further. Okay, starting with the hull. The hull, as you can see, is one continuous molding. As, or they try to have a stylized version of the funky shape found on the M26 hulls by molding in these two angles that we have over here. Here we have the upper hull. As, you, as one can see, the detailing is going to be very stylized, but the molding themselves are pretty crisp with the fidelity of details that are actually integrally found. Tank has its side skirts integrally molded into the upper. And here you can see the grill work. From the upper and lower brings us to the turret. Really boxy in shape, but again, it's a caricature, so it should be plenty suffice. We have the exhaust manifold with the early pattern travel lock, tow cable, spare track rack for the turret undoubtedly, the mantlet, as well as some other fittings, and here we have the main gun. Now what's, you, what's actually nice about this kit, being a newer kit, the gun is molded as one piece of plastic. This is a departure from the earlier kits, namely the Tiger One, in which the gun barrel was a two piece assembly, which of course would lead the builder to contend with a center seam running down the barrel. With the piece being molded one piece, that's not gonna be an issue. The muzzle brake of course is integrally molded in and has the look and feel of the 90 millimeter muzzle brake found on this vehicle. Hmm. Oddly enough, there are two shell ejection ports. Moving on to the last runner is clearly the running gear. Here we have the sprocket and the road wheels. Some small Pioneer tools and other fittings for the Models superstructure. Moving to the tracks, just like with the other kits in this line, the tracks are one piece continuous type assembly. They do have some nice thread pattern molded in for the medium and specifically for the type of subject matter with this cartoony type aesthetics, but the tracks are actually pretty nicely rendered. Moving on to the water slide decals. Typical type quality for Meng decals in general and from the other World War II's and Meng kits that I've built, the decals are usually a very good quality and I'm undoubtedly these are probably going to be the same. From there now brings us to the instruction manual. Now the instruction manual on these kits are pretty nicely done with their layout. These kits do have a reputation of being very easily assembled with very large plastic bits and this kit does not seem to be any different. Like I said before, it should make for a very quick and fun build. Starting with the model suspension, the components are the stock units and were utilized. However, I went ahead and made a slight change to the sprocket. Now, the sprocket on the kit 
is designed to have the face here, which is totally flat, and then we have the little hubcap sticking out of it. However, as we all know, on the M26 Pershing, the hubcap is actually inset because of the width of the track, and I did want to incorporate this little design feature on this model. Luckily enough, I didn't actually have to do any serious modifications to the kit. The way the kit is designed is that you have a flat face found on the front portion of the sprocket. However, on the reverse side, it has the inset like we have here. All I had to do was mount the sprocket on in reverse. To do the conversion, I had to make a modification to the stem that stuck out of the tank's hull. The tank has some stems, like you see here for the row wheels, and the sprocket is no different. However, in order to do the sprocket modification, you have to shorten the stem to make up the space which would have been occupied by this recess that we have in here. In addition to that, I also utilized the same kit mounting stud, but the stud had to have been shortened in order for it to fully mount in place. Once the modification was made, however, you have now the added detailing of the inset sprocket, which in my opinion helps the look of the model, but you also retain the tracks functionality. As you can see, it's just like the way the kit is designed and the tracks can roll. Now, I'm not going to roll this model here because I don't want any of the paint to chip and crack off of the tracks. It's being built as a static model. I'm going to leave it as such, but if you want to have your model be able to be used as a a pushable toy, that can also be done, and these kits in general work very well in that manner. Now, one thing I want to point out about the running gear is with the order of installation. Now, the kit wants you to pre-assemble all of these components, track included, just prior to the upper and lower hulls being fitted, and they do have a good reason to tell you this. That's because of these side screws that we have here. These pieces are molded into the upper hull, and because of that, you're not going to be able to get access to the suspension once everything is together. Now, unfortunately, with the way I build my models, I always install the suspension and the running gear at the tail end of the build because it simplifies painting and also allows me to thoroughly delete the seam work which are found on those assemblies. Now, because of the sprocket mod that I made before with the mounting spindle, this allowed me to install the components in this format. The track was able to slip into this section over here and then that allowed me to then pin on the sprocket, the front idler, the two rollers, and the main bogey wheels. If you're working with the stock kit, this may not be able to work for you because of the one-piece track design. It's going to hang up on the sprocket lug that we have here and you're not going to be able to slip the track in in a very easy and efficient manner. So you might want to watch out for that if you're working on one of these Pershings. From there, the build was pretty much stock. The machine gun I drilled out with a pin vise. And the remainder of the tank's details basically went on without any problems. There are a lot of small little ammo boxes that need to be painted. And luckily these are separate moldings. Here we have a small shovel found on the top, what would be the storage fenders. There is the iconic first aid kit found on this side here of the rear fender. On the back we have the M26 travel lock. Note that this is not the type that's integrally casted to the rear exhaust. It's an interesting detail to point out. It of course has its loop around tow cable. Here we have a small little jerry can. Now this is the kit supply one and to make the piece further pop you'll notice I went ahead and painted the top portion red and as you've seen in the beginning intro, that actually is a real jerry can that I have. I believe the red painted jerry cans were for fuel to avoid any confusion as the blue painted ones I believe may have been for water. On this side here, on the opposite side, the, the artist went ahead and gave you an axe. Gives the tank a little bit of symmetry. And there's some more ammo cans that need to be mounted. Now, if you notice, the ammo cans and all the other fittings are painted in a separate shade of olive drab. This does help the model pop as opposed to leaving everything with the same color used for the base coat. Same thing could also be said. Oops, move the camera up. On this little box here that we have in this rack. Now, on the real Pershing, this rack would be for the foul weather driving hood. But, you know, it's World War II's, anything goes. And again, just like with the ammo cans, to spice it up a bit, I went ahead and painted it a different shade compared to the rest of the model. Now, this piece is molded integrally to the rack, so clever paintwork needs to be done. 
in order to separate these two pieces without having the paint collide with each other. So you want to use a nice good paintbrush when working on this piece. On the opposite side, in true purging form, we have here a spare track rack, be it a canted one, but again, welcome to World War Tunes. And they even went ahead and gave you the details for the engine hoist, which is located in this section over here. Now, in a real purging, there would be a second one here, but again, it's just not there found on this model. From the turret side, it takes us to the rear, where we have what would be the storage 50 caliber system, found on the rear bustle. All the parts you see here are stocked with the kit and are nicely done. Here we have the MP48 spring antenna base, or what would be the MP48. The one that's supplied with the model is very stylistic and, of course, in true ECA form and function. With a swipe of amber paint, I went ahead and simulated the ceramic portion, which would be in the middle. The hatch does have a working hatch lid to it. However, it doesn't really hold on very well and as you can see it can easily pop out. So that's something to be aware of when you're working on your piece. It closes in a nice firm manner though, I will say that. The gun stylized of the 90 millimeter and has a really cool looking muzzle brake on it. It also has the two holes in the mantlet, one for of the coaxial M1919 and the other one would be the gunner scope does have that Pershing look and feel and attitude to it, which is neat. Oh, and the engine deck is really nice with the grill work. It does have, again, your stylized Pershing grill work. And you can see how I weathered it to make it pop over the finish. Now for the vehicle's paint and the markings, I went with a late pattern ETO camouflage scheme, which would be appropriate for an M26 Pershing. It's basically my usual shade of olive drab with some black stripes airbrushed over. And then the tank was weathered in my usual format. Now the markings on this model here are all stock supplied with the kit. And just like I guessed before during the unboxing portion, the markings are very, very good and went on without any problems. They're water slide decals, but there are high quality water slide decals where they apply, they get lacquered on and don't have any real problems to mention. When it comes to this model, apply your markings with total confidence. Now I will also add that the parts fit were pretty good. The turret does have some seam work to contend with where the upper and lower halves fit together, but this is true for just about every single tank model kit on the market. This is also true again for the upper and lower hulls. There is going to be a slight seam to contend with on this leading edge here, as well as also on this leading edge here on the rear. But the kit again does go together in a very nice and snug way. Uh, I will also point out that some of the other fittings do fit on, but they are slightly on the tighter side. This is something I've seen on several other of these World War II models, and the Pershing here is not exclusive of that. When you're working on one of these models, I recommend with a needle file, just slightly removing a little bit of material from some of the pegs on a few of the pieces that need to be fitted. It will make the build go together in a more effortless manner. I will also say that the turret spins in a nice smooth way. The engineering was nicely done on that. And the barrel also has some good elevation to it. The barrel doesn't have any issues with drooping or anything. And even though the barrel is a nice little chunky piece of plastic, the kit is nicely designed in that manner where you could just position the barrel where it needs to be and you're not gonna have to worry about it dipping on you. At the end of the day, I'm really happy on how this build turned out. These World War II's kits always make for nice, fun, and relaxing builds. They're quick, they're easy to assemble, and they make for a nice, unique piece once finished. It's also really fun to shift gears every so often from the usual type of subject matter that I work in. Moving on to skill level and recommendation, just like with the other World War II's kits, these models here are very easy to work on and are very beginner friendly, because of which a beginner can work on one of these builds and build it into a nice representable piece. Obviously anyone who is an intermediate to an advanced range can take the basic kit, either build it out of the box or, as what I've seen what a lot of people have been doing lately, customizing these things and taking them further past what the kit gives you. Really, no holds are barred on these models, and you can go as conservative of a build or as crazy of a build as you want, and that's frankly really, really cool and awesome. 
Now, for recommendations, obviously anybody who's a fan of the World War II's video game is going to appreciate this model here. The, another type of person that would like this build would be anybody who's a fan of those weird, funky proportion model kits. There are a lot of planes and cars and ships out there that have an art style very similar to this one here. This model here would greatly be able to fit in a collection like that without any problems. I would also recommend a model like this to anyone who's really just starting out with model building. It's a nice fun little piece and it's not too hard to assemble like I mentioned before. Being really user friendly, these models here make great first builds for someone like a youngster or even someone else who's a little bit on the older side and wants to get back into the art of model making. These models here are really forgiving for that purpose. The final person I would recommend this kit to would be anybody who likes to build just basic traditional plastic tank model kits and they want something just a little bit different to add to their collection. Like, well, basically yours truly. And with that, that wraps up this model showcase video for this undefined scale World War Tunes caricaturized Pershing. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content, be it model showcase videos like this guy here, or the larger scale project update videos that frequently get posted on this channel. Another way to keep in the loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There I have photographs of this particular build as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that have been posted on the channel in the past. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com for 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks for watching.